Hi, uh, hello everybody, welcome back. Emperor door. Now then, Valange, Gaston, Lula. Our situation deteriorates by the moment. I assume you three must have some means of remedying this. Please allow us to handle this, Your Majesty. Princess Leticia is ultimately the heart of us Sirius. Take control of her, and all this can change. Besides, our ride will be coming soon. Lola, why the hesitation? We do not have the luxury of choice here. How did it come to this? God, you mean we gotta fight them too? Lola! Your Highness! If you harbor any doubts, there is always the option to talk this through. Fighting is not the only solution. Well, I'm assuming that my trench then on the third place, right? Flying weapon. Lola. Lola. I know. Must we fight? We must. We're also going to need that special Duma. We are to enact the Emperor's vision. Uh, special Duma? Is there something different about this one? There are two areas in where I differ from other survey model Duma. First, I am designed to function autonomously, and I am thus severed from the network with other Duma. I have the capacity to act according to my own judgments. This mention of other Duma interests me, but what is the other difference? I am also a combat model. All of the abilities I have provided to you in battle thus far are not found in other Duma. These abilities have value as research. Normally, Duma share their data amongst each other via the network, and their choices are dependent upon decisions made within that network. We are the ones who should be utilizing the powers of that Duma. I have no intention of aiding you. If you understand Duma, then you already know this. 
which means we have to take what we want. Now, enough talk. Prepare yourselves. I will pay for what you did to Neon. Now, what is this? Sympathy for a traitor? You're a great monster. If not for all you can still be alive. So you can stay now that you can Wow, that was a bad one. And which one about their bodies come by and pick them up now? So, this is where it ends. <laughs> Colonel. Colonel Volant. <sighs> Please, surrender. Any further violence will serve no purpose. Magnificent. A fine display of the strong wills that drive you. I do believe I should like to test, through the Song of Steel, just how well those fierce wills of yours hold up to my own. Emperor Baldor, why? Surely there is no need to fight any longer. I do this precisely because there is a need. The peace of our world demands it. Father, it is over. The Empire is... Gerard, this is merely the beginning. Call this an Empire though we may. In the end, it comes down to the strength of one man. Bear witness to this truth now. Is there no other way? Relinquish your fears. Prove that you can bring me to my knees. Best me here. 
<laughs> well done, princess. I see that I alone had no chance to be a match for you. Do you see now, Valange? The princess? No, the people of this world are of strong roots indeed. We didn't foresee the inhabitants of this world being so formidable. Even without Duma's abilities, we stood no chance. Colonel Valange! The key is that Duma there. It's unlike any we've encountered, and far beyond our capabilities. We collected some valuable data. Where are you from, Duma? Just what do you all know about Duma? Scorpion. Engineered life forms. Scorpion. You are not familiar with them? They dwell amongst the stars. Wonderful beings capable of plucking all pain from this world and bringing about everlasting peace. As long as humanoids exist as they are now, their desired utopia will never exist. How simple. That's merely how you choose to see it, as an android from Vergold. What are you inferring? Perhaps it's best if you enlighten them yourself. Eh, Duma? Tell them your purpose and identity. Correct. Scorpium is an integration of artificial and organic life. The name refers to our cybernetic collective, which exists to seek out further evolution as a novel life form. I am a probe, created to survey and assess the suitability of organic candidates for integration. An integration of artificial and organic life? Is that possible? Compensating the failings of flesh within organic matter? Such a lure is not unusual. I presume this Scorpium simply works on a much grander scale. Like Elena, it sounds as if their goal is to force evolution's hand through technology. Incorrect. Our primary purpose for integrating cybernetic and organic life is a congruence that draws upon the strengths of both sides to the fullest. We do not seek evolution that extends along a course biased toward one side or the other. So you aren't just cyborgs then? No, the reverse in fact. It is not so much making an organic base more cybernetic, but Scorpium is rather making certain aspects of a cybernetic base more organic. Affirmative. The observations of the Arnold Robotics Android are astute, as expected. Wait, what? The base is cybernetic? The end morphological faculties may appear as such. However, it is also conscious as a life form. In other words, major philosophical differences emerge when the concepts that form the basis of self-awareness are derived from either organic or cybernetic. These present some drastic differences in outlook. I see. Your sense of self-consciousness as an artificial being has been of interest to me. Since Duma, or rather Scorpium, achieved such a state, they must now be seeking to further evolve themselves by integrating with humanoids. Wait, wait, hold up. I am completely lost here. These are some pretty tough concepts you're tossing around. So how is it that the Emperor is so familiar with this stuff that throws us spacemen for a loop? <laughs> Marielle, an unidentified vessel is approaching the Aster Sector at high speed. ETA to the system is 36 hours. What? A escort, no doubt. Melange, Gaston. Yes. yes. Colonel? Gaston! What is this? Lola, thank you for all of your hard work. It was due to your efforts that we obtained such a marvelous specimen as the Emperor here. We are truly grateful. What? What are you saying, Gaston? Do you mean to say you're going back to Scorpium? Oh, come now, Lola. Surely you knew this from the beginning. Now, 
The Colonel and I must be going. We have to do our part to protect the Emperor. Gerard, I leave this empire and world in your hands for the time being. Forge peace with Princess Leticia. And wait patiently for the inevitable return of your lord. Father! Wait! You think you can escape? Please. I wouldn't try if I didn't think it possible. Warden! Mario calling the Akizuki. Send me the trace coordinates of the two who just vanished. I'm sorry, but they've completely disappeared from sensors. We can't track them. Uh, no. <gasps> what now? Another ship is approaching from the opposite direction. Looks like it should be here in 48 hours. I've identified the ship. It's the Aldus, a Vergolzian merchant vessel. It's Antonio. Mariel, how about opening up a proxy channel with your ship? Copy that. Mariel to the Akizuki. Please open a channel to the merchant vessel Aldus as soon as possible. Once the channel is open, patch it through to Captain Raymond's universal device. Understood. Whenever you're ready. This is Antonio Lawrence, captain of the Vergoldian vessel, the Aldous. Who am I? Antonio! It's me, Raymond! Uh, Ray! Is that really you? Why are you using a Federation frequency? It's a long story, but I've teamed up with a Federation officer. There's a Federation ship in orbit around Aster 4, but they are not hostile. I need you to focus your attention on the unidentified ship coming in from your opposite direction. I'll be in touch again once things calm down. Over. Wait, Ray! What nonsense are you talking about? Now, I take it we don't have any leads on where the Emperor and his friends ran off to. No, I'm afraid not. In short, this means we've won? It... It most certainly does not feel that way. Oh well, long loading times again. So this could be another third stream of loading. Guess I won't be seeing much more of Aster now that Antonio's almost here. Probably a good idea to tie up any loose ends before I head to the council chamber at the Basilica. Anyone home? Welcome to our inn, the very pride of Baldar.
bet everyone's waiting in the council chamber behind the altar. Yeah, with that combined.
so I thought I heard my phone ringing. Everyone's waiting in the council chamber behind the altar. I don't know what the hell I'm flying at. Some children playing in the fountain splashed with water. That everyone's waiting in the council chamber behind the altar. One idiot.
Not quite so sure. What, what, what was that in there? I find it hard to believe. But the reality is my father has abandoned the capital, and the powers of the throne has been transferred to me. Then... Neither I nor the citizens of the Empire ever wished for this war. If your kingdom were to offer peace, we would be most receptive. Prince Gerard, after your good mother was sent to be wed, the kingdom and the Empire enjoyed amicable relations. I ask you now, Emperor Gerard, new sovereign of the Vale Empire, can there be peace between us again? <laughs> that is all I could ever ask. Much quicker than expected. The unidentified vessel is apparently no less than three hours away from Astrofor's orbit. And the Aldous? They are 16 hours out. Unfortunately, the unidentified vessel also possesses speed on par with the Astoria. Depending on what they want, it may be dangerous to take our time here. <sighs> I was hoping we would have had a bit more time. about Lola. Even if we apprehend her and take her with us, our own violations of military law rule off the prospect of a proper investigation. The Akizuki's purpose is to rescue the crew of the Edis. I'd prefer to postpone the arrest of any Virian deserters until we're properly prepared. Leticia, can you keep an eye on Lola in the meantime? Yes. There are a great many things we wish to ask her as well. Great, thank you. On behalf of the Federation, I sincerely apologize for this inconvenience. Oh, nice gesture. Uh, if only I could stick around a little longer, I could gather some intel from her. And take it back to Vergold as a nice souvenir. Sorry for rushing off like this. If you cannot take me with you, then perhaps I can ask that you not leave. It'd be hard to refuse if you did. Forgive me. I did not intend to impose upon you. And yet... Must you leave so abruptly? We have yet to even thank you. You saved my life. Took me in and helped me to survive on this world. Rescued my friends as well. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair of me to ask you for anything else. Well, this is going all, not going all Kirk hmm. over this. A man who brings a woman to tears is a vile man indeed. So you're leaving? Yes. Remaining on this world any longer will do nothing more than cause harm. I am hoping this is not farewell forever. No, no. We Vergoldians aren't bound by Federation laws. If I start missing you guys, I can come whenever I want. And if you call, I'll come running. Do not think of staying away too long. I dislike leaving my debts unpaid. Indeed, I formally command you to visit us again. I dare say your name shall never be forgotten in the kingdom of Osiris. Mariel to Akizuki, requesting transport. Ray, I... No better hands for this nation to be in than yours.
Yeah, more loading. Loading along on the PlayStation 4. Deck one, bridge. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, everyone? Well, there were a few crazy enough to join me in stealing a ship from a base. Well, when you put it like that, it feels like a lot. Let me introduce everyone. This is Sayuri, handling the helm, communications, and analysis. Pleased to meet you all. You have a single officer in charge of three stations? And here we have Pike. He's in charge of weapons, and defense systems, and transfers, and deflectors. Pleasure. Wow. Nah, this is a merchant ship, so I don't actually do all of that at once. And finally, there's Kasim, who has engineering all to himself. Kasim? Hi there. One person in engineering? Oh, and I'm the provisional captain. The four of us are the crew of the Federation merchant vessel GFSS-12193, the Akizuki. So everyone, meet Captain Raymond of the merchant vessel Edis and his officers, Elena and Chloe. Our first order of business will be leaving the Aster system and getting you all to the Aldis. Given the extraordinary circumstances and the fact that an unidentified ship is approaching, I'd like to ask for your help. Is it all right if you assume some of Sayuri and Pike's stations? Captain Raymond, what does that console on the captain's chair tell you? You sure you should be showing me this? Mm, all I can say is it's not much different from the merchant ships I know. Then why don't you try sitting there? Whoa, whoa, enough with the crazy talk. Look, you're the only one present with actual experience as a captain. I thought you were in the military! And I'm sure your crew might have some objections to taking orders from a non-Federation civilian. Oh no, not at all. On the contrary, it'd be very reassuring. The long and short of it is... The Akizuki is the first ship we've ever operated completely by ourselves. What now? I'm impressed you were able to steal a ship in the first <laughs> place. I'm ashamed to admit it, but the truth is we're in a little over our heads here. Can we lean upon those amazing skills that allowed your crew to escape the Astoria's attack alive? Oh man, I am never going to hear the end of this if Dad finds out. All right. First Officer Marielle, let's contact the Aldis before we depart. Understood, Captain. Chloe? Roger that. I'll open a channel with the Aldis in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Aldis, this is Communications Officer Chloe Canaris aboard the Federation merchant vessel Akizuki. Chloe? Chloe, is, is that you? You're on a Federation ship? It's been a while, Antonio. Ray and Elena are here too. The Federation Akizuki and her crew are on our side and are lending us their support. Isn't that right, Ray? Yeah, this is Captain Raymond of the merchant vessel Akizuki. Yeah, we're all safe here, Antonio. Uh, I have no idea what the hell's going on, but I'm glad to hear you're all in one piece. We were able to recover the entire crew of the Eas. They're on their way back to Vergold. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you, Antonio. Hold position in your current sector. We're gonna start heading your way. We have an unidentified vessel approaching the Aster system. And we don't want to have contact with other ships right now, for various reasons. Yeah, 
Uh, then I don't recommend coming this way. It's crawling with Federation vessels. Vergoldian Interstellar sent out a warning. Uh, son of a... What do we do? We have no choice. Uh, Captain Antonio, I'm Mariel L. Kenny, first officer of the Akizuki. Kenny? Uh, now you're shitting me. The unidentified vessel's ETA in this sector is approximately two hours. For Raymond and the others, I ask that you do everything you can to reach us at maximum speed. Uh, understood, Lieutenant Kenny. We'll rush over there, scramble warp 11. Uh, no, make that point 12. See you in the bit, Ray. Over. It will take them 10 hours to reach us. What shall we do, Captain? We play it by the book for now. Let's try to hail this unknown ship. I is that wise? It's necessary if they're not sending out an ID signal. And we'll be showing them that we intend to follow the rules of interstellar travel. Sayuri. Understood. I'll try a long distance hail via subspace communication. Hmm. There's no response. I'm still not picking up an ID signal, either. <laughs> Shy, are we? What's the combat loadout on this vessel? Well, we have four phase cannons, three layers of shields, no cloaking system, and a subspace warp engine. Let's pray they aren't hostile, then. We'll play it by ear until they're 30 minutes away. Why not get some rest in the meantime? We have cabins for you on deck three. I'll contact you if something changes. You sure? I will stay here to support the others. You, go get some rest. All right then. I will gladly take you up on the generous offer. Wouldn't hurt to take a look around the ship, I guess. Wonder if Chloe's in her room. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Oh, there's a lot to do here, is there? Huh. Never thought I'd be sitting at the console of a Federation ship. I hope we can get to the Aldus without any more mishaps. Captain Raymond, Miss Chloe, the unidentified ship is now 30 minutes away. Hopefully, it's nothing to worry about. Back to the bridge. Status report. Unidentified vessel is 24 minutes away. Registration remains unknown. Aldous's ETA is 8 hours 20 minutes. Line up tactical and schematic displays. Map the unidentified ship's position on tactical and include their predicted course. Elena, I need you to perform Eclipse Tactics as soon as they exit warp. Roger. Um, what exactly are Eclipse Tactics again? The idea is, we will conceal our position from their sensors, using the Shadow of Aster 4. 
You gotta know at least that much if you intend to stay up here. Uh, I only know it from lectures at the Academy. Ships need to adhere to an orbital trajectory in order to remain near planets. So it is impossible to maintain a fixed position within interstellar space. In short, by referencing the trajectory of the other ship and the size, rotation, and revolution of the planet, we make minute adjustments to our own orbital trajectory to ensure the planet is constantly between us and the other ship. Okay, so we'll never know each other's exact positions. Doesn't that mean we won't be able to fire on them? Exactly. It's a move not for attacking, you see, but for buying time. Unidentified ship is 15 minutes away and exiting warp. Unidentified ship reduced thrusters to one fourth thrust. It's here. Mariel, red alert. Sayuri, prepare to execute eclipse tactics. Elena, I want to get a look at this ship before we enter the planet's shadow. Switch the screen to max optical magnification. Unidentified ship, on screen. What the... this ship? It does not exist in my database. This is a Scorpium construct. So you're telling me this is a Scorpium ship? While there is no issue with considering it a Scorpium vessel for the sake of convenience, what appears to your eyes as a spaceship, all of it entirely, is in fact a single oh, Scorpium wow. cybernetic life form. So the ship is alive. I see. Quite fascinating. Henceforth, I will refer to the object as a Scorpium vessel. Captain, the Scorpium vessel has entered an oppositional orbit to our own. We can now only estimate its current orbital trajectory. Now it's a question of whether we can hold out long enough for Antonio to arrive. But it doesn't seem like we're what they're after, though. Its outward appearance gives no clue to its combat abilities. Speaking in terms of Pan-Galactic Federation vessels, its offensive capabilities are on par with a battleship. So we're outmatched. Great, let's hope it doesn't come to that. We, Scorpio, will never attack others without reason or without warning. Yeah, that's the same with humanoids. It just means if we get attacked, it'll be for some reason we don't know about. The Scorpion battleship is maintaining its opposing orbit. They are likely aware of us as well, so I believe it is safe to assume they do not mean to attack. And the Aldis is about eight hours away. Hopefully they continue to play nice. Hmm. In hindsight, maybe we should have just left this sector after all. If they don't intend to attack us, then can't we just go? The fact that our own long-distance sensors detected the Scorpion vessel means we cannot slip by undetected. What is the warp speed of this ship? 11 normal, 12 at maximum. If they're the equivalent of a battleship, getting into a game of cat and mouse will not go well for us. At any rate, our safest bet is to not provoke them for now. But it won't be long before they detect the Aldis approaching, too. <sighs> this is going to be a long eight hours. Better to take rests in shifts. Elena. Contact me immediately if that Scorpion ship so much as twitches. Roger. Hey, what are they up to? What's going on? Better get up to the bridge and check it out. mean by surface putting it on screen ray leticia ray i am so glad you are safe you are facing off with a scorpion ship yes what's going on leticia why are you with lola we'll get to that later lola to the akizumi the scorpion vessel is gaining altitude it's begun to circle around while decreasing absolute speed. Decreasing absolute speed? You mean it is adopting an aggressive posture? We are still in the shadow of the planet, and cannot confirm this from our end. Tactical and schematic maps still display a predicted trajectory. Lola, can you send your schematics over to us? Already done. Thanks. There they are. 
damn it. Cutting comms for now. Tactical and schematic maps updated. The Scorpion battleship will enter effective sensor range in three minutes. Already? Don't let your eyes off that enemy ship for a second. Enemy ship? Wait, are we that certain they mean to attack? Why would they suddenly break from the standoff? Man, what are they teaching you guys in the Federation these days? It's a textbook move. They took advantage of Eclipse Tactics' weakness. If they don't move, stay as they are and wait for us to approach them, they can continuously inch closer, and we won't notice until the very last second. It's a clear indicator of an attack. Hey, Duma, I thought you said they wouldn't come after us without a good reason. It is likely that reason to attack arose. This is no time for jokes. <laughs> Where is the oldest? ETA, three hours, 12 minutes. I figured as much. They knew. Guys, the Scorpion vessel is here. Break orbit. Course 120. Mark 180. Roger. Race defensive shields. Reroute full energy to the rear. Got it. Energy signatures indicate they are preparing to attack. They are using optical weaponry. Shields at 65%. Restoring them now. Damn. Over 30% from a single hit? That's definitely a battleship. There's no way we can survive until the Aldis gets here. Can we escape? Impossible. We must abandon ship. Oh, not again. <sighs> Damn it! Sayuri, turn to course 210, Mark 90. Set the autopilot to enter a high orbital trajectory. Roger that. All set. Mariel, is he going to do what I think? Just follow Captain Raymond's orders. Okay, now all hands to the transfer chamber. We don't have much time. We should hurry. Pike, set the transfer to initiate as soon as we enter orbital trajectory. Um, where are we going? There must be a ship from where we last received transmissions from the surface. Put us down somewhere there. Well, this didn't last long. Back to the planet we go. Sorry, Akizuki. We're safe, somehow. The tissue's got something about Raymond. Far be it from me to interrupt this joyous reunion, but I've pinpointed the Emperor's location. They're still inside the Tyrannus. What? Wh what do you mean, the Emperor? There's a good chance that the Scorpion vessel that destroyed your ship just now is here to collect Colonel Valange and Gaston. And perhaps the Emperor. 
And what is Boldor hoping to accomplish aboard this strange ship? The Emperor knows of the Scorpium. Leaving them unaccounted for wouldn't be a good idea. Not for me, and not for Asarius. <laughs> Let us be off. There is no telling what they will do if we leave them unchecked. Got it. I'm with you. If they know something about that Scorpium ship, I definitely want to hear it. Okay. You will have to wait outside. The interior has been fortified by Colonel Valange and the others. Once we know it's safe, I'll have Raymond Lawrence contact you. Huh? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Understood. Ray, be careful. Let's make our way. The Colonel and the others seem to be down on the lowest level. All right, then. I gotta say, though, seeing this ship crashed right into the surface like this is kind of impressive. Okay, I'll see you soon, YouTube.